Hello guys, uh, my name is Milad Amirian Far, and this is the first episode of uh, Qflow Introduction course. So in this course, we are going to now get familiar about the Qflow and MLOps steps, which is very important now as the uh, AI generative models are uh, converted to the main trend of the technology. So um, me, and maybe us as MLOps engineer should provide some reliable infrastructure in order to uh, give good services to the AI developers to develop their models uh, continuously. So uh, if uh, I want to uh, take a look on the steps of MLOps or ML or machine learning uh, development steps, uh, we have to take. Uh, we have to consider the, this matter that these uh, MLOps steps are con containing uh, different uh, uh, steps, including data verification, monitoring, data collection, configuration, service structure, and so on. But uh, unfortunately, the majority of developers think the main uh, and the only steps is just developing the code. But we now, uh, alongside developing the code, we need uh, some other tools in order to have a, a reliable solutions for enterprise level services. Uh, beside that, uh, MLOps uh, have a different footprint from other web or uh, uh, mobile deployments. For example, the training phase in MLOps uh, steps is a resource intensive process, while an inference phase is lightweight and speedy. So based on what, uh, what phase we are, we need to provide a responding uh, hardware infrastructure. That's the main service that you can uh, rely on Qflow and in next slides I will explain more about that. So Qflow uh, will be uh, the main and only and uh, right now the best uh, solution for creating a standard uh, uh, deployment solution for enterprise ML ops not just for development or production, but the entire life cycle. Uh, let me uh, explain you more about the MLOP stages. We can consider each uh, steps as an uh, unique uh, system. For example, in system one, as you can see, we have uh, four steps data ingestion, data analysis, data transformation, and data validation. For each step, yes, I know, we can do it manually. We can uh, have a different a wide uh, um, uh, data mining team in order to provide this data, but as uh, the main responsibility of each MLOps engineer is to reduce the cost of development, it's better to automatic all of these steps. So we need an infrastructure to do all of these steps automatically in the best way. So uh, let's say again, we need Qflow for doing that. Uh, we can rely on Kubeflow for data splitting, building model, validating model, even scaling the model, even serving model in production environment, and even monitoring the model. Uh, what is Kubeflow exactly? Kubeflow, uh, in fact, extends Kubernetes ability to run independent and configurable steps with machine learning a specific framework and libraries. Besides that, uh, Kubeflow will help us to have a good ma management in CPU and GPU and also TPUs. So uh, working with this infrastructure, working with the uh, process units would be very, 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 uh, actually play a very, very uh, crucial role in every MLOps engineer 
uh, daily task. Besides, Qfollow has a lot of other components, for example, uh, running notebooks, including Jupyter notebooks, uh, including notebooks in VS Code or even in RStudio, uh, providing uh, training models framework and providing serving mod model framework uh, in the different and uh, separated con uh, components. Uh, will provide you a very uh, flexible uh, infrastructure to give the flexible solutions to your enterprise. For example, as you see here, this is a hypothetical pipeline which uh, was run uh, in uh, Qflow. And you can see the, mon uh, the multiple and different steps of the pipeline, for example, loading the Reprocess data, as I said uh, in this uh, step, this is the uh, step which is related to data. And this is training the model uh, steps, which is the, uh, which is actually, sorry, this uh, step, building a model and training at scale. And also evaluating the data and watching the logs, which, in, which is these uh, steps. So you can see all of these steps uh, can be managed easily by Cube4. Uh, like I said, um, you can use your own notebooks and also you can allocate a corresponding resource for these notebooks. How many CPU cores you want, how many GPU you want, uh, how much memory you need, and a lot of other options that you have for making your own notebooks and your uh, and notebooks for your team or department. So it can be very interesting for uh, MLOps or, or AI engineering team. One another interesting thing is uh, the built-in ability to have tensor boards. For example, after training the models, you can see immediately what's the epoch accuracy. So it's, isn't it uh, actually interesting? You can see epoch loss for after, and you can even uh, compare the epochs and training uh, uh, course with each other. Another uh, important thing is create an experiment. You can define a lot of experiments and find the best tuning uh, situation for your model. Thank you for creative experiment. Uh, another important and interesting thing would be running pipeline in different type, different run type actually. You can run it just for uh, once, and you can, you can run it re in recurring status. Also, you can define uh, trigger running. You, you can define uh, the start time, end time, and the period of the running. For example, every hour, every day, every week, and something like that. So, thank you for, uh, thank you of uh, Qful Infrastructure, V as an MLOps engineer, uh, can provide a reliable solution for our uh, AI uh, development team. Uh, that's the end. That's the end of uh, this first episode. And in the next episode, I am going to install the Qfollow in my own hypothetical uh, Kubernetes cluster. So thank you for joining me. My name is Bilal Emilio and this is the Qfollow introduction course. Bye bye for now.